Hey everyone, welcome back to American Truck Simulator. This is David Steele. Today I'm driving in Red Thunder and this is actually a, a drive I did. I'm, I'm narrating this after the event. I'm testing uh, some torque curve changes to uh, an engine, a Z-Mods engine, the ISX EGR. This is a custom version of that engine. So, well, I wouldn't like to say what exactly it is, but it's more powerful than the, the standard EGR um, ISX engines. Um, tentatively, this one is branded a Red Thunder engine, but you know, watch this space. Well, first things first, I'm going to go ahead and uh, grab some motion lotion or some fuel or some diesel. I'm going to get on the road. And today we're going to be hauling a 55,000 uh, pound tractor trailer. I've chosen this one deliberately because I want a little bit extra weight than a standard cargo, but not a heavy haul. So as you've seen, I'm still using a high fuel price mod. I really want the game to reward me for driving efficiently or using an efficient engine versus not. And that's the best way to do it. But we're getting off topic, so uh, let's go ahead, get back on the road eventually. Join the highway and uh, head off to the farm to collect this tractor. This may not be the nicest thing to do with traffic, but I've seen people do this. Oopsie. Okay, we're finally on the move. So driving the, the Red Thunder truck bobtail, you get the same shift points as you do if you have a cargo behind you. I don't think the game simulates um, changing shift points depending on, on the payload. It does depending on the need, so perhaps it does a little bit, but if you try and accelerate on an on-ramp up a gradient, it will often shift down if you've programmed it correctly and use a lower gear. It's not always what you need, but there we go. So, it's important to test the engine transmission points with different cargoes behind you, different hills, different roads, um, to really get a, a feel for how it's going to behave. And a lot of people enjoy American Truck Simulator, but use the trucks in automated or automatic mode. And an engine that doesn't have a great shift point pattern can kind of ruin that experience. The other thing that can ruin the experience is how it behaves when you use the J brake or the engine brake. And so this particular tune, I've told it to shift down quite aggressively when I use the engine brake. And I'm going to refine that. I That wasn't the best experience. This is me testing it on the off-ramp. It's a little different when you're laden, but not a good experience. It's a little bit too savage for me. As well as different payloads, different cargoes, and different roads and hills, you've also got to test it using different amounts of throttle. Or, uh, I guess on a diesel, it's not really throttle; it's more torque input requirement. Because if the transmission shifts too early or too late, and you're gently moving off with not that much power, it'll shift up, shift down, shift up, shift down. It's just not a good experience. So you've got to test that as well. A lot of things to test, and the best will in the world, I try and get everything, but I don't always. As we pull into the, the farm here, something I have yet found how I can influence is the gear, the transmission will put you in when you use it in fully automatic and you are stationary. So some engines are that torquey enough that they'll put you in a, a fairly high gear. And that's okay, but when it comes to maneuvering, it, it will roll too quickly. That's something that this, uh, this engine gearbox has. As the gearbox I'm using, well, I'm using um, an Eaton uh, Endurant XD. So this transmission's not yet in production. It's quite tall. And there's a reason why I'm choosing a fairly tall gearbox. It kind of enhances the, the shift behavior of the, 
well, enhances the bad habits that the transmission has. Right, well that's my tug test complete. Let's get back on the road. And this time we are hauling 55,500 pounds of, I believe it's crawler tractor. So uh, it's gonna work the engine and work the truck quite differently to having nothing behind you. What we're doing here as we uh, leave the yard is we're giving it power, we're taking off the power, we're giving it power, we're taking off the power. We're being a bit sort of uh, amateur crowd driving here. This is hopefully how people don't drive in real life. What we're testing is, is how well the transmission copes. Does it want to change up, change down? It's a bad experience if it's just shifting gears like crazy, which it may do in real life, but I want to try and smooth that out a little bit. And here we have a very gentle move off. Not using that much power here. just want to make sure that it doesn't hunt around the, the various gears because with a lot of weight behind it, it it may well do that good news is I seem to have tweaked that out of this uh, this particular model so that's good that's um, one of the hard things just a few revs either side of the, the shift points can make a big difference here but since I've got that right so uh, should probably celebrate at this point right that's a soft drink other beverages are available. This is one of my favorite camera views. I love the sound and with a Z mod sound mod and yes it sounds a bit fanboyish. But you can hear the intake, the exhaust, uh, there's lots of things that you can hear. So here we're gonna um, gonna join the on ramp. I want to listen to, to how the the truck behaves. This is an uphill on ramp, so greater power demands. Just tweaking with the jank brake. Okay, but mostly I love this view. I, I this is one of the more enjoyable uh, engines to me. It's uh, twenty something years old, so it's modern enough but it's also got that classic jank braking type sound. All right, so let's turn in. Doing this without the cabin view, so, and then we give it lots more power. You hear the turbo rushing in. Let's, let's do what the transmission does. Okay, that's its high power shift down. That's not always great. Can't do that much about that. Yeah, it's gonna shift up at 2100. This is a special engine, if you've driven the ISX EGR. Alright. Not a bad effort. That's performing and shifting exactly as I'd want it to. Once you're not going up the hill, once you're not accelerating quite so hard up the hill, it shifts up and it's like, oh, I can shift up again. Fantastic. So what we're doing now is seeing how well the transmission shifts as we get up to our cruising speeds. So in that ideal world, 55 at top gear is, is, is a benchmark. Depending on the gearbox, depending on the engine, you do not accomplish that. This is an extra tall gearbox, at least compared to the standard ones. And it's an engine that doesn't produce peak torque until 1200 RPM. So I don't expect it to be usable at 55 in top gear. But we've still got to test it though. And I should maybe clarify what I mean by usable. So yes, you can force the engine to use top gear at whatever speed you want. And if you come to a hill or a gradient or you want to accelerate, if you've not got the power, it's just not going to do it. So I want a bit of flexibility in, in the, the engine. You know, if you come to a small gradient, don't change down uh, three gears and drag, you know, reach from from eight high to says it's six low I think at that point so yeah we want to try and get that that, that that blend between keeping it flexible and keeping it refined and using a tall gear to try and save a little bit of fuel and I can already sense some some comments coming on saying I want my transmission to give me full power well that's great you can switch modes in your transmission to give yourself full power mode 
and that will change how the transmission works. Oh, you can just use manual, um, do things that way. But I'm using the transmission in the economy programming, and that's quite deliberate. We haven't even looked at uh, the normal or the high power modes. That's something else. And here what I'm doing is asking the, the truck to get up to a cruising speed uh, from 16 or 7 high. And it's doing it, doing it nicely. We've gone from uh, 7 high to 8 high, which is good. That was a, a decent uh, shift, just over 55. Just to test if it will cruise at 60, which I was pretty confident it would. Uh, tell the cruise to do 60 and um, let the thing cruise along for a bit. So I tapped up to 65 and now I'm going to let the speed bleed off and see at what point it shifts down. Does it shift down one or two gears? Ideally I'd like it to shift down just one gear because it's a fairly flat piece of road. If it's a hill, in the ideal situation it'll go from top, shift down a couple of gears, put it right back in the power band, and then on the way up, depending on circumstances, shift up one or block shift up to two, back up to your cruising gear. But as for this trip, I need to pull in for a break. Okay, well hopefully that's given everyone a bit of an insight into some of the testing that uh, I do with the transmission. Try and find those ideal shift points, variety of loads, variety of speeds, gradients, uh, so on and so forth. You're never going to get it perfect, but what I want to try and do is get it so close that you don't feel disadvantaged using an automatic transmission. Anyhow, that's it for now. Hopefully you've enjoyed this piece. It's given you a bit of insight. You know what to do if you have, you know what to do if you haven't. But mostly thank you so much for watching. Take care everyone. Goodbye.